party right now. Hi, Hi. All right, so we're going to go to you. I'm in order. Well, it wasn't that bad as long as you keep track of what you're doing. So we're going to use pattern recognition to find an indefinite interval. We're going to use a change of variables to find an indefinite interval. General power rule, and then what's going to, so basically what this unit's doing, it's up until this point when we took an integral, when we did something like this, even if I had like x plus 3 and then 2x plus 7, and I asked you to take the integral of that, you would have to FOIL them first and then take the integral, yes? Up until the, this point, we have never done an interval where I have something like this, where I have a function within another function. We've never done that, and that's what we're going to take care of today, is taking the integral when I have what's called a composite function. So, so what I'm going to, you do remember the chain rule. So, like, if I had gave you a function, let's say I said f of x was equal to, if I said f of x, let's see the one I just did to make it a little bit harder. Let's say I had 2x plus 3 raised to 7, and I asked you to take the der derivative of that. Do you remember how you take the derivative of that? So what did you do? Bring 7 to the front. So then you would simplify that to... 14 times 2x plus 3 to the 6. So we had this extra little, we had that extra little step when we take the derivative of compo composite function. So now when I, so this one, it, this is another one, if I asked you to take the derivative of this, you could take the derivative of that, yes? And that would be, go ahead, 3. Two x, and then so your final answer would be six x times x squared plus one squared. Everyone remember that, yes. So when I think of this, do you remember writing like f of g of x? Do you remember writing composite functions like that? So when I do this, like f of x is going to be the outermost function. So in this case, the, the formula for f of x is raising something to the third power. What's inside the g of x is going to be that x squared plus 1. So you're going to have to be able to take these functions and separate them into what's the inside function and what's the outside function. So the first one... So the formula to reverse the process to take the antiderivative is to, if I'm taking, is in, when I take the antiderivative, I have to have both of those parts. So like here, remember, we took the derivative of f of x and multiplied it by the derivative of g of x. So that's, I'm going to need both of those parts to take the antiderivative. And if I don't have both of those parts, I'm going to have to make it so that I do have both of those parts. So like if I have, so if I have, this guy here, like if I if I if I asked you to, to take this, what would be the derivative of what's inside there? Two x. So see how I have this two x here? Mm -hmm. That means I can take the antiderivative fairly easy because I already have that. So what I'm going to do is what we do is it's called u substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the innermost function. So the innermost function that I have is I'm going to say u is raised. I'm going to say u is equal to x squared plus 1 because that's what I'm raising to a power. And that's what's going to be the first ones that we do is we're going to just take something raised to the power. So whatever I'm raising to the power, that's going to be my u. Then if I ask you to take the derivative of u, so derivative of u in terms of x would be what? Just 2x. Are you with me? So then when I ask you to solve for just du, you're going to say du is equal to 2x dx. I'm going to multiply both sides by that denominator, which is dx. Oh, and I should be filling this out in the table. I'm not, am I? Yep. Where's my table? So I said u is equal to x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1.
So then when I take the derivative, I'm going to say that's going to be du dx is equal to 2x. And when I solve for du, I'm multiplying both sides by dx dx. So du is equal to 2x dx. Then I'm going to go back up here to this interval. This is what I made you. Are you with me? Yeah. Wait, can you go back to the I'm telling you that I'm multiplying both sides by that dx. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then, it's, so here, this u, I'm going to call u. So, and then what I have here, this, this 2x and this dx, what did I say 2x dx is equal to? What is that equal to? U. Du. So when I go to rewrite this integral, I'm going to do integral. U is being raised to the fourth power, and then I'm going to write du. Remember we said these letters have the max in order to take the antiderivative. Why is it raised to the fourth power? Because up here, it's raised to the fourth power. Does everyone do with what I wrote there? Yes. Now I'm going to take the antiderivative of that u to the fourth, which would be what? What do I do when I take the antiderivative? I'm going to take u to the fifth over 5. What else? Because I don't have a c. Plus c. We're going back to the plus c because I don't have a lower bound and an upper bound, so I need that constant. What? No, which you raise, because if I were to take the derivative of u to the fifth over 5, I would take 5 times the 1 fifth, which would make it just u to the fourth. Right? Yeah. So you divide it by the new power. So now I evaluate it, and then I'm going to replace the u with what u was equal to. So we said u was equal to that x squared plus 1. We have x squared plus 1 to the fifth over 5 plus c. That. And then if I check my answer by taking the derivative, I would, so this is just a check, you would not normally do this, I would take 5 times that, which would be 5, I'm, I'm making this harder than I have to, but I like to do that, sometimes reduce this power by 1, and then the derivative of c would be 0, and so these would and we end up with x squared plus 1 to the 4. So it does check. Oh, oh, the times the derivative of this. Power rule, sorry, power rule. You don't have to do that. Okay. Because if, if this is my function, and I asked you to find the derivative of this, you would do the power, you would take, you're going to do the power rule, so you're going to multiply everything by 5, and then reduce the exponent by 1, yes, and then take the derivative of what's inside, which would be 2x. Yeah. Because I have a 5 in the denominator, if, if I do the quotient rule, mm -hmm. It, it will end up being. If I did the quotient rule for this whole thing, would be, I would end up with x of x, yes. But I don't have to do the quotient rule because this 5 is a constant. If I go to take the derivative of the constant, it's going to be 0. Are we good? So we're, we're, the problem. we're not going to fill out these little boxes, but I'm looking here. And what? So I'm going to rewrite this first before I start. And I'm going to make this 2x plus 3 to the one-half power dx. Then I'm asking myself, what am I raising to a power? The 2x plus 3. So my u is going to be that 2x plus 3. My du over dx would be what? 2. 
So then I'm just going to solve for du, and so du is going to equal 2 dx. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to rewrite this in terms of u. So I'm going to do the antiderivative of u to the 1 half, and then this 2dx is what I need to, I, in order to write du, in order to put a du here, that's going to equal 2dx. But what's the problem with that? There's no 2, so what would I do that? I'm, gonna, I'm technically putting a 2 there, so how would I undo putting that 2 there? Divide by 2? Divide by 2, but it really, I'm going to multiply by 1 half instead. Why? Because then if I write this du as 1 half times 2 dx, well, how, well, how about if we do this? I, maybe I like this better. Maybe this will make more sense to you than I like this other bit. So du is equal to 2 dx. I have that dx up there, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by 2 to get that dx. And so I'm going to have 1 half times du. Does that make more sense? So then I, but instead of writing the one half here, I just put it out in front. Now I'm going to, so this one half is just riding along for the ride. What's the antiderivative of u to the one half? u to the three halves, because I add one to the exponent. Plus. So here, these twos will simplify, yes? So when I go to write, rewrite this in terms of u, instead of, so because these letters have to match. So when I took the derivative over here, I, I took it in terms of u, so I did du, du, dx. Then I look, when I get this, if I had a 2 in there, like if I had this 2 in here, then I would be good because I'd have the 2 and the dx. And the first one, I had that. This one, I don't have that 2 anywhere. So I have to, I have to adjust for it. So if I solve for du, what du is, because that's what I'm going to write here, is I'm going to write a du here, if I, then I would just solve for du, so in this case I would have to divide these by 2, or multiply by 1 half. Got it? Oh yeah, I'm not done yet, thank you. Yeah, I vote after that, and I still have u, that was silly. So u was 2x plus 3. Thank you. So this one, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm going to rewrite it. So I have x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half dx. What am I raising to a power? What's being raised to a power? Evan? X squared plus 1. So I'm going to say u is equal to x squared plus 1. Then what do I do? Take the derivative. So d, taking the derivative of u in terms of x, is equal to 2x. So 
then du is equal to 2x dx. What do I, so if I go and rewrite this, here's my u to the one half. I want to put du here, right? What do I already have that I need for du? I already have the x and the dx, right? I already have the x and the dx. So how am I going to take care of that too? Because I have the x here and the dx. But the x is in over there. Well, because I'm rewriting everything in terms of you. But I and to take the antiderivative, the to take the du has to match that the same letter has to match. So when I make this a u, I have to write this as du. That's why I go over here and I take the derivative of u in terms of x, and I solve for du, and I get this, right? Okay, okay. Yep. And then I have this two. How do I how do I take care of this two? Oh, one half. I have to have a one half there. So I'm going to have one half. Oh, that's this, 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 so, and I could write one, I could put this one half here if I wanted to, but I don't like that. So I always put it out in front. Now this one half VU takes care of this whole thing, yeah? yeah. Alright, so now I take the antiderivative, which is U to the three over two again. Two over three. Can I put my u, can I put the x back in for my u? That, that x was part of my du. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, then I have another problem. You want to try it by yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay, what am I raising to a power? So I want to write it. I want to write a du here. So right now I have eight x dx. Yes. Because it's, it's in the denominator. So you're asking yourself, like right now you have negative 6x, right? So you're asking yourself, what do I have to multiply negative 6x by, I'll put a b, in order to get 8x? So that's going to be negative 4 thirds. Does that make sense what I did? Okay. 
Say it again. So right now you have one thing raised to power and then you have other stuff how how it looks that way. So the other stuff is what you have to sort of fit into this view. Make sense? So now I'm just going to leave this negative four thirds out in front. What do I do? I, what do I do to that negative two? What do I do to find the antiderivative? Add one. So when I add one, that will be u to the negative one, and then I divide by negative one and plus t. Yes. We agree that these negatives will cancel each other. So then we're going to be left with 4, 3u. So now I'm putting it back in. Why did those dots? Because it's raised to oh, negative 1. Oh. Oh, well, that was me showing that the negative signs cancel. Can you go over how you left the. So if I rewrote this, I would have right now I would have like I would have one over one minus three x squared squared, and then this is times that six x dx, right? So this six x dx, I have to ask myself, what do I multiply that six x dx by? Oh, sorry, this is eight. Why is this eight, right? I have to ask myself, what do I multiply that 8x by? What do I multiply this? This is what I get when I take the derivative. So I have to adjust this to make it equal that. So then I sort of made a little algebraic equation. I asked myself, what do I have to multiply this negative 6x by to get 8x? I, I just made up a B. Some letter, any letter, but not X, obviously. Mm -hmm. That is a minus sign. So if I give you So this first worksheet, I mean, this should be quick. Like you're looking at it and you're trying to see what what you would have to replace the question mark by in order for it to work. I forgot it. What did you forget? I write it. No, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to pause this video because they don't need to listen to me explain to you how to do this. So when I go to do number six, I'm, I'm going to start it the same way. I'm, I'm rewriting this as x, and then this is 4x minus 1 to the one-third power dx. So then I ask myself, what am I raising to a power? And you tell me I'm raising this 4x minus 1 to a power. which means my du in terms of x is just going to be 4, right? Yeah. So then du is equal to 4 dx. So if you want to think of it this way, I need to make this a 4 dx. So I need to make this a 4 dx so I can make this du. So I'm going to put that 1 fourth outside so those two counter each other. Do you want to think of it that way? Yeah. Um, okay. It just said no. So, so the du is equal to 4 dx. Yeah. So I'm replacing, so this 4 dx is du. 
I put a one fourth out here because I just randomly threw a four in there. So one fourth times four would be one, right? Or if you don't like that, she doesn't apparently like that. Then I say dx is equal to one fourth du, and that I still have this one fourth there. The problem is, is so now I'm rewriting this, and I have u to the one third du. I have this one fourth out front, but I have this x here. And I have to write that x in terms of u. Because everything, when I take the, the antiderivative, everything has to be in terms of u. Is there a way that I can rewrite this x in terms of u? So I'm going to solve for x here, yes? So u plus 1 is equal to 4x. So u plus 1 divided by 4 is equal to x. Now, before I take the antiderivative, what should I do with that quantity of u plus 1 over 4 times u to the 1 third? I should probably do that. I should probably distribute that, yes. Why am I Can I take this 1 fourth and pull it out? Are you okay if I do that? All right, do you want me to write it like this? I can write it like that. Do you want me to write it like that? Can you not put it all the way in front? I can put it all the way in front. Would you, would you like me to do that? Okay, so they're voting for bringing in the front, so times 1 fourth, so that'll end up being 1 16. So when I multiply exponents, what do I do? Add, so this will be u to the 4 thirds plus u to the 1 third, and this whole thing is du. We have to take the antiderivative first and then do it. And you're okay if I just go term by term? Yeah. And here's that 1 16th. I add 1 to 4 thirds. When I add 1 to 4 thirds, that will be 7 thirds. So I divide by 7 thirds or multiply by. 3 over 7 plus add 1 to the 1 third and then divide by 4 thirds or multiply by hmm? ugly Uh, 3 u to the 7 thirds, 16 times 7, 2, 4, 1, 12. Is it, I'm asking. Is it 40? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. I'll go with this. 3 u to the 4 thirds over 64 plus b. And then the last thing I have to do is Plug in u, and u, to remind you, was 4x minus 1. So I'm going to have 3x. Do you want to do another one? I do want to stop here. I don't want to go on to the next one. So this is what your homework is going to be. Your homework is going to be this 6.4 additional practice worksheet for the quiz, and then 1 through 4 on that new substitution work to get a good page.
emergency relapse, two problems that we have done, right? 